Okay, so let's just get through the determinants real quick. So determinant is basically a function that takes a matrix to a, uh, to a field element. Okay. And we shall see that A is invertible if only if the determinant is non zero. Okay, so. So, given a one element matrix, we define the determinant to be the element inside. And for a two times two matrix, we define the determinant to be this times this, subtract this times this. Okay, so given another n times n matrix, define a hat ij is a deleting the i through and jth column. Okay, so basically you have a matrix and i through j columns are deleted. The remaining matrix we stick together is our new matrix A hat ij. So it's n minus 1 times n minus 1 matrix. So for n of the matrix, we define their determinant to be this. Okay, so pause and take a look at this definition. Alright, so it's alternating sum. And this should be, I think, A i1. Alright, so the theorems. Um, if a row, if one of the row is equal to the sum of the other two rows and others are the same, then we have this. So to prove that we, uh, we by induction, the base case is skipped. So suppose we 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 have this is true. Suppose n equals n. So we have this, right? And they're deleted. Matrix are the same, right? So we can have this algebra. And if i is not equal to p, then they can only differ in one row, right? By induction hypothesis, right, we're, we're good. And so far, also, we have this. So combine all of them, we have, they're, they're the same. So we have this, and we have this, so we're good. Also for a scalar multiple, all right? I'll just skip the proof. So if a row of a is all zero, then the determinant should be zero, and the determinant is linear in rows. Now interchange two rows will also flip the sign of the determinant. So let's go to two. I just skip for induction. Now it's sufficient to interchange row one and row p. Why? Because if we interchange p and q, we consider this, right? You change one and p, and then you change one and q, and then again you change one and p. So basically, you're changing P and Q, okay? So there are three times. If we show this is true, then it's like negative one, negative one, two, one, two, to this power three, right? Which is still negative, so we're good. So now, if I is not equal to one in Q, then we have this. This is my induction hypothesis. If I get one or I equal to Q, then we claim that we have these two equality, okay? So there is no, there is no typo, okay? Then we know that the determinant B is equal to negative determinant of A if we just take this sum. So which is only prove one. To prove one, we know that this is true. And B had one one is reordered this of my Q1 to this. Right, so we put R1 to this. All of them shifted forward, right? We move R1 to here, right? This is by Q minus two swap operation, right? We swap this, and I swap, we swap, 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 right? So R1 goes to here, right? So it's Q minus two swaps, okay? This, you just picture it, okay? So we're good. Theorem, another theorem is that if it has two identical rows, then the determinant it should be zero. If B is at a kappa multiple of one of the row to another row, then the determinant remains the same. So let's just prove this. And equal to is trivial, so we do induction. Now we have this, right? Let T to be so basically we want the identical rows become the row one and row two. Okay, so we want that so we, we, we do swapping 
so that the identical rows are the first and second row. Okay, so T is this, and B is defined as this. So determinant B is this, so if determinant B is zero, then we're good. And we know that the row one of B is row two of B. This is what we want, right? So, so from here, it, it follows immediately, right? It follows immediately because the row one, row two are the same for B. And for second thing, the second thing is like scalar multiple, right? Adding a scalar multiple to another. We have this for I is not equal PQ. Our Q of B is our Q of A, adding kappa times row P of A. So we let C be replaced row Q of A with row P. Okay. Then we know that it is linear and rows. So we have this. And this should be zero because it has uh, identical rows, right? Uh, identical rows from here. It has identical rows, so it should be zero. And note that we have this if A is elementary row matrix. Okay, we have this, is true. You, you should just verify. It's all computation, so I just skipped. I'm talking very briefly because it's just all computational. Now, Genome A B is equal to this, so here's another theorem. We have these two, these three. Um, so we notice that B follows from A and C follows from B, so just prove A. A is invertible, then A, A B are what? Product of elementary matrices. If A is, so we're done. If A is not in a row, it's not a full rank. So one of the rows uh, is the linear combination of other rows. If we add, so if we're deleting the, if we're deleting the uh, summand, right, if we delete the summand each step, each time the determinant remains the same, right? So eventually, a rule of zero, so determinant of A should be zero, so we're good, okay? So here's the corollaries of determinant of the transpose because it holds because this holds for elementary matrices, okay? And A1 to AN has rows of A, and we let this become rows of B, okay? So if we're, we're swapping, again, it's Q minus 1, it's Q minus 1 swaps, right? Q minus 1 swaps. And the results holds also for columns because if we consider the transpose. So... If one of the rows is equal to EQ, then we have this. It's a lemma, okay? So if Q is equal to 1, then one of the row is equal to E1, okay? So from here, the determinant of A immediately follows, right? Because if we're deleting, if we're deleting this, it has a row of entirely 0. Right? If we're deleting this, then this is our AP1, right? Now, if Q is like somewhere here, some, some other position, then we can swap it, right? We can swap to this case, the above operation. So the new matrix is in form of this, right? And we know that to turn to B is this, and we have this equality, so we have this equality, okay? So determinant can be expanded along any row and column. So we just want to show that it holds for rows. Column is by transpose, okay? So if the rows of A are this, the row P of A is equal to this, which is the sum of this, right? So determinant of A should be equal to this, right? Now each of those is equal to those. Right, and this is precisely our formula. Okay. All right. So that's it.